Hello, this is Simon and this is Mayor 0.53. One of the new features in this build is this new colonist uh, skill screen. So you need to pick the colonist that you'll want for your colony. Um, you'll see they have different expertise and you'll want to be picking people with uh, useful or interesting skills. As you can see, not all of them are useful. Um, all of them will have a small effect on gameplay. Um, colonists will be able to actually learn new skills as well by performing tasks. So we'll pick a guy with materials research, geothermal power systems, uh, nutrition and med medicine's good, robot relations and electronics is maybe useful for talking to the imps. Um, we'll get this guy who's good at making lukewarm tea or maybe a computer programmer. And this guy's got maintenance, so it's probably more useful. So start to base as usual. We want to build a workshop. So we'll just drag this out. And then we want to build some workshop tables to allow us to start building things. We'll just build one for the moment. We want to build a wind turbine outside so we can start getting some power. Looks like there's wind outside, so we probably don't need a solar power array as well. So in this room we can now build a microwave smelter, which is uh, one of the new additions to the game. Instead of building things using minerals, now you have to extract uh, building materials from the minerals. And smelt them down. So we're going to grab this imp, and we're going to possess him. We're going to run around the base quickly, back to right the other side of that room, and just quickly dig through. I could have told this imp to do it um, himself, but it's just quicker as you can sprint when you're in imp mode. So we've now dug, dug out this big connected area, which we can place a hydroponics in. One of the key things with this update is I've gone through and, and basically any, any, any kind of major gameplay bug that was uh, holding people's bases up or you know breaking things after a, f a few hours of gameplay and things we've gone through and tried to fix um, it's not perfect yet but it's a lot better so we've got the smelter and you can see this woman's uh, just filled it with minerals as you can see uh, it's a complete mineral processing extraction system featuring a roasting and reduction process and electrolytic refinery. So you click it to begin and then that will smelt and then assemble the items. So we'll just look at the emails while waiting for that. Okay, that's that guy who was crying earlier. So as you see that's created some nice building materials that we can use to build things. We probably want to repair robots at the base now, and also an atmosphere generator for everyone asphyxiates. He's crying again. So I want to build our big hydroponics over here, so we can show off our new feature and uh, some of our fixes and changes. build a uh, research lab so we can start getting new technologies and build more items so they're building the atmosphere generator now they built the robot and we probably want to get more colonists, otherwise the game will go very slowly. So we'll call some more in from orbit. And then quickly press space and go back to the base. So that room's getting built pretty quick. So now we can show off one of our cool new features. Um, which is more items on the walls. So the first one that we're adding is the air vent system. 
This allows you to pull air in or out of rooms or to mix air between rooms, uh, which is going to be incredibly useful for a room like a hydroponics where you, for instance, um, want to generate lots of air as well as your food, and then you can flood it into other rooms such as your livestock containment. So I've just spotted the uh, smelters waiting again, so I might just start that again. Currently it's fully manual, but uh, later in the game I may make it so the colonists can actually start it themselves. But at the risk of causing something like a fire. So build a, a nano printer so we can get more imp robots. Put doors on this wall because we need to build a living area. There's a cat, he's very apathetic. So here we've got our, our new vent built in. As you can see, it's quite easy to know if it's running or not. And you can switch it to draw air into the room or out. So we want it set to out, so it pulls the air out and pushes it into that research lab. And it'll plant some plants, which will generate some air. So we want potatoes because they grow quickly, but also kale because it's uh, better for you. And carrots. In fact, the potatoes grow slower, I think. I don't know my own game. So these colonists have now uh, turned up. And we should have a look outside. And yep, So we've got a um, geothermal vent here. So we know we have a guy who has geothermal skills. So he, he will basically provide a, a bonus for when, when building and maintaining that. One of the other new features is, instead of the quick help here, there's a new screen, which is the base manifest, which shows you everything that's kind of going on in your base, uh, where everyone is, and rough amounts of materials. These are actually going to be based on what your colonists have actually built the ma manifest from. So if, if, if there's a room, for example, which they can't access, they won't add those things to the manifest. Um, one of the things with the game is I never wanted a global UI because it doesn't make sense when all your resources are physically in the world. So having a, a manifest that could even potentially be wrong um, is, is a kind of nice touch rather than just throwing a number in the GUI. So build a solar still because uh, Yukonis can dive dehydration now. So that wind turbine's damaged. I don't know where that utility robot's actually going. Probably to go fix a door somewhere. So let's pick it up and take it on a walk outside. And go fix that. We've tweaked all the first person stuff. Um, lots of little bugs that we fixed. The uh, robot had a a lot of problems with kind of getting stuck on bits of grass, so we've loosened that up a bit. So we've just fixed this. Probably not going to get any higher than this, so I'll just stop now. Press tab to leave. So let's get our research going. So we want to build more stuff in this room, but first let's build another air vent system. I haven't built the current one, but... So we've got one pack of building materials currently loose in the base. Other colonists may have them in their inventories, be carrying them around. So we've got some tape storage and a computer. Some native flora sample containers, because they're the probably quickest way to get ecological data. I'm going to set this area to get dug out. So this will probably turn that into a livestock containment. We'll turn this into a living area. So 
they built our geothermal power system here. So that's generating 2,000 watts. Uh, they built the uh, new vent, so we don't want that circulating. We actually just want it pulling air into the room from the hydroponics. So just clicking that, it sets into that mode. As you can see, those rooms have excellent atmosphere. Okay, so our power's been knocked out by a solar event. But I think we're okay for the moment. I haven't built any uh, power storage in this bit in this game. Um, I probably should do. We wouldn't have this blackout if, if that wasn't the case. Um, so we'll build some beds before people start dying of fatigue. Maybe something in here. No, it's too small a space. So we've got that uh, solar still running as well, so that's generating us some water. of just uh, making sure things tick over all right. We need to put some lights in here so we uh, grow the plants a bit quicker. Plants sat in the dark can uh, die or just uh, stop growing. Put a fossil stand, We've got a computer built but no research data yet. So we've got a lot of people kind of, um, oh, guy crying at the micro smelter. He's been crying a lot, so he could uh, probably do with kind of slight, probably more time off or uh, more social contact, or I could modify the lighting in the base uh, to cheer him up a bit. Let's close off some of these emails. I assume that's the solar event which knocked out our power grid just now. This guy complaining that he needs more building materials. You see we've got a lot more power generated than we need. And another guy complaining about the weather. So they're building those beds quickly for us, which is good. The priority of a lot of things in the base have been like tweaked again. Um, you'll find that like if, if there's something that obviously needs doing, they'll they'll be doing that. Um, obviously, it's it's difficult when every colonist has you know 30 or 40 needs, individual needs now, as well as the overall needs of the base and other issues. So you know you'll never be able to entirely second guess them, but they uh, do feel quite smart now. With the skills, of course, you'll see people hanging around doing the same kind of task uh, eventually, which is uh, going to be a nice kind of thing. You know, you'll have someone who's obviously your doctor or the guy who's in the workshop building everything. There's a uh, 65 current skills um, in the game, so, sets of expertise, which is enough that you'll never have two characters that are exactly the same. So we've built these doors so we can get more kind of human traffic through. So of course, as your base starts getting larger, your, your main issue is effectively time spent walking or running. So we'll dig this through, but we'll just add an air vent system instead of a door. So we'll 
probably want more imps, more digging. And our computer terminal started researching, slowly but surely. To start off in uh, researching in any of the areas, you need 32 uh, megabytes of data in that area. Um, quickest way is to let your colonists just like pick it up. Um, they'll gain research data and ideas just through like being rested and sleeping and seeing things in the world. Uh, surface walks gives them more data. Or you can give them s specific tasks like collecting uh, tree samples or um, meteorites. People with skills in meteorology or for example for the trees, dendrology, um, will actually gain more data and take the samples quicker. And in turn they'll be more likely to take a job of tree sampling. So we're going to dig this out and again we're going to do it in first person because it's just a slightly bit more quicker. We have more control. There we go. Oops, move the camera around. Um, okay, we actually want to dig further. So we can extend our hydroponics room a bit. As we want to grow more food, we actually have colonists waiting. We can call down a capsule, but we, we want to wait until uh, the food's more grown and maybe perhaps we've extended our hydroponics so we can provide more calories. So we'll build another smelter. As your base grows you'll want to stop you know, building more nanoprinters and smelters so you can produce things quicker. We've got our first piece of research, special stuff, uh, which is a perk which allows you to use local wildlife for food. There's a in the next update, you'll, you'll actually be allow allowed to take in the local creatures into your um, livestock containment and domesticate them. So we've got the air vent system on this one. We probably just want that pulling into the room. And get some more minerals again. As you can see, we've got plenty of research. Um, generally, generally collecting the uh, data isn't too much of an issue. Of course, if you do want to speed it up, you can build um, specific research items or perhaps uh, hunt some creatures and do necropsies on them. Uh, but for the moment, you know, we don't have any kind of harsh need. This is a pretty easy sandbox level. We haven't been attacked yet or anything. So we can click this tree for research to get some more research data. I can't remember if we had a ecological research specialist. You can mouse over any colonists to see what expertise they have. We have plenty of minerals in our base. Could probably build some more ration packs, but I think we're okay for the moment. You can see the plants have started to grow a bit. So we'll call in another capsule, and if we're lucky, well, unlucky, we'll be so far away from the base that the colonist doesn't have visual contact with the base. Um, in previous games, this wasn't particularly um, well illustrated to the player. The uh, colonists would kind of stand around gormlessly, um, looking like they were stuck or broken. But now they have a, a new behavior, which is they'll start kind of wandering around, having a look about. So I have a feeling that's not the direction the base is in. Um, but he's just kind of like, there he is, he's doing a, almost a whole loop of his capsule to have a look around. Like looking about, yeah, there you go, he's trying to find his bearings. But what they'll do is they'll kind of have a rough indication of where the base is. So they'll start walking in the right direction and hopefully find the base if it's accessible. So he's walking in this direction, and there you go, there's the base. Um, so he'll eventually find it. 
um, but you run the risk of having colonists effectively getting lost on the surface now, which is a, a kind of cool touch. Kind of everything in the base is, is flowing along nicely now. Um, we want to build a, a livestock containment room because we've got chickens randomly wandering around the base. So we'll place this here. Probably won't place a door on this side, just an atmosphere vent system. We want to pull air into the room because uh, the chickens obviously use up the atmosphere quite quickly if they're breeding. To get them to come to the room, we want to put food in it. So some feeders will be good. We'll extend our hydroponics again. it's quite critical that we get enough food and we're probably not producing enough at the moment. Not for eight or so colonists, so we'll build some fruit trees as well. Which will take a while, but they're high in calories. So we've got um, new filters for the atmosphere generators. And an upgrade to 3D printers. So if we mouse over the atmosphere generator we can now uh, see that it's been upgraded and will be less likely to burst into flames catastrophically which is always nice. I'm going to show you the uh, up lighters as well which I forgot uh, which are new kind of um, aesthetic items that will improve your colonist moods. Um, we've got different styles so you can start thinking about kind of what you want your base to look like, and they also have motion sensitivity to save electricity. They can just turn on when a colonist is nearby them. So this is Mayor 0.53. As you can see, it's pretty stable, no major bugs. It's pretty fun, even if I say so myself. And I will see you at 0.54. I'll see you later.